Hello everybody. Today I am checking on the queens. It's been two weeks since I last checked in on them. And some of these I actually caught. Um, and I haven't checked on them at all on April 22nd and the 23rd. So I'm pretty excited. It's really hot in my room. So if you hear me like panting, I'm like, I'm like really hot in here. But that's good for the queens, so I don't mind it too much. But um, yeah, we're gonna hop right into it. As you can see, I got I got a tripod, so um, the picture will be still. Hopefully, you all can see the queens okay. But if not, I can zoom in and whatnot. But um, yeah, let's let's get started. So here is Campanatus Nearcticus 1 on April the 6th. Let's check on her. Oh, there she is. And she has, she's got some brood there. Looks like little, little larvas. I'm going to put her away now. But that's good. So she's progressing. Here is Campanata Snellingi one. Ooh. She's got a little pupa. Oh, I'm really shaky today, sorry guys. But she's got a little pupa. So it won't be too much longer until she has her first worker. I hope, I hope it won't be too much longer. How's she looking on the water? She's looking good. All right. Here is the second Snlingi. Ooh. She has got a pupa and some larva. The, one of them looks like it's about ready to pupate. It's pretty big. Oh, how cute. Little families. Okay. Oh, it's hot in here. I'm sweaty. Well, now we're gonna get into the chromiodes. Um, here's Chromeodes 1. Oh, hello. Oh, wow. She's got a pupa and a really big larva. There you go. This is exciting, guys. I'm so excited and happy. They're doing so well so far. Chromeodes 2. Hello. She's got, she's got a pupa. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh oh. This one, Chromeo's three. She doesn't have anybody. Um, Oh, she doesn't actually look that good, does she? Maybe I'll feed her and maybe I'll put her in a mini hearth. Hearth, hearth, whatever. But she's been pulling at the cotton a lot. It looks like she has like a little poop pile right there. And she's got some all growing on the cotton too. Yeah, I'll, I'll feed her. Let me set her to the side. Chromeodes 4 is looking good. She's got a pupa and a larva. Ooh. She's got two larvae and a pupa. That's cool. 
Oh, I wasn't really showing you her. But, um, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh no, I shouldn't have cursed. I'll bleep that out. And here's Seven, which I got a little later. I got her on the 8th and not the 6th. But she has some eggs or a little larva or something. Something going on. She's looking good, though. All right, so that's all, all the chromios I caught. So now we're gonna get into the ones I caught later in the month on the 22nd and 23rd. So here's a Nearcticus or Carrier. And she is actually pretty good. She's got some eggs and stuff there. Here's one. Oh, she's a little startled. She doesn't have any brood. And she's been pulling at the cotton a lot, as you can see. She's going a little crazy. I hope, I hope she's okay. Maybe she just hasn't calmed down yet. I know Campanatas are a bit infamous for not not calming down very quickly but here's another one i got a day later and she oop, she's got a little pile right there oh they're like orange that's kind of cool and now here's the last one of the snellingi and ooh. She's got some nice little larva or eggs, maybe, either one of those things. She's pretty calm. That's good. Um, so yeah, that's, that's all the queens I got that are still alive. Um, I'm gonna feed Campanatus Chromeodes 3 just to maybe move her into a mini hard. So she doesn't have any cotton to pull. And maybe she'll calm down. But yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. So um, maybe I'll take a little short video of me feeding Chromeodes 3. Um, so if I do that, that'll be right after this. Okay, bye. Okay, so here is the footage I promised of attempting to feed and move Campanatus chromaeodes 3 into a Tar Heel Ants mini hearth, hearth, however you want to say it. I offered her some honey, and I was hoping she would go for it to give her some energy after pulling on the cotton for so long. She didn't seem interested at first, but that's pretty normal. It would take her a moment to smell the honey anyways. I wanted to give you a nice view of her eating the honey, but she seemed to not even notice it. She just walked right over it and got scared by my hand. I am a giant after all, and she has only known this tube for the last month. Sometimes, I wonder if founding queens get lonely. After all, they come from a colony surrounded by their sisters, and then all of a sudden they're thrust into this world where they're all alone and starving. But they probably don't even have the brain capacity to comprehend loneliness. It was just a conversation I had with someone that kind of stuck with me. Anyway, I could tell this queen wasn't interested in eating at the moment, so I decided just to move her into the mini hearth.
I just wet the mini hearth because it hadn't been used in a long time, so I wanted to make sure it had some humidity in it. I probably overwatered it, especially for a Campanata species, but in the future I'll be a lot more conservative with the water. I actually used this mini hearth in the past for a colony of Campanatus castaneus that I caught, but there was a mold outbreak in the nest and they ended up dying out after none of their brood developed. I hope that this year I'll be able to catch some castaneus of my own and raise them. They're very pretty ants and I enjoy watching the colonies in my yard go about their business. I really frightened this Campanatus chromeos queen when I tried to get her out. Hopefully she isn't too stressed out by being moved, but I knew that moving her would cause her some stress. She's clearly been stressed this past month since she doesn't have any brood and has been pulling at the cotton, but I hope that moving into the mini hearth will calm her down. I don't have high hopes since it has been a while since she flew, but this is kind of a last ditch effort to help her found. As soon as she got out of the tube, she began running, but I wasn't worried I would lose her. I gently coaxed her onto my finger and moved her into the nest. I initially had a stopper in the tube connecting the nest to the outworld, but I removed it because I was worried there wouldn't be enough air circulation. I also offered her some sugar water and a bit of mealworm in case she decided to eat later, but I'll make sure to remove it soon. I hope you enjoyed this longer video. I'm really excited about what we saw in the Founding Queen's tubes, and I can't wait to show you all their first workers when they close. I hope everyone has a wonderful first week of May. Bye!